Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel, how you doing guys, I hoped you all doing great, so in this video we are gonna see, what if Kid Naruto awake his over destructive Mangekyou Sharingan. This is part 6. And if you want more then, please leave a like, subscribe and share with your friends, let's get started. 4 months later. 1 week before Chunin exams. Fire release. Fireball Jutsu Haruka yelled out as a huge fireball exploded from her mouth. The fireball went flying at a very fast speed toward Naruto. Naruto grinned before he flashed through his own jutsu, water release. Wild water wave. The jet of water extinguished the fire and left behind a small amount of mist. Haruka then began to cheer, I finally did it. I told you I could. Naruto chuckled, this is the second jutsu you have mastered, I'm quite impressed. Haruka smiled really big, come on. Show me another one. Naruto pinched her nose, slow down kiddo, I mean I already taught you the fire release. Phoenix fire jutsu, and this one. I think that's enough for now, as well I don't really have that many. The rest of my jutsus are at least B rank. Haruka's eyes shined for a second, B rank? Teach me. Teach me. Naruto shook his head, you're not ready for that type of stuff, as well you should hone your other skills. Jinjutsu and Tujutsu. Tell me how good are you at those? Haruka pouted, and then she went flying toward Naruto. Fist first she punched Naruto right into the face, though the last thing she saw, before Naruto fell back, was Naruto's Sharingan eye. She quickly tied up Naruto, and began to brag, see? I don't need work on Tujutsu. Then suddenly she felt her movement restrained, and she saw the image of a Sharingan eye. Shaking her head, she noticed she was the one tied up, what? Is going on? Her forehead was then flicked, and she looked up. She stared right into her brother's Sharingan eyes, yeah you kind of do, due to the fact you tied yourself up. Her pout returned as she couldn't believe what just happened, what did you do? There is no way I tied myself up. Naruto sat by her and let out a loud chuckle, but Haruka you did, you see you fell under my Jinjutsu. Had you noticed it you could have easily dispelled it, since I didn't use too much chakra. This confirms that you really need to work on your other skills. Is Soakli detecting Jinjutsu? Haruka sighed, struggling against the rope, she finally managed to free herself, I guess you're right, but I can't use Jinjutsu, because I don't have the Sharingan. Dot as well my Tujutsu isn't as good, since I can't predict the enemy's movement. Naruto look at her, Haruka you need to learn how to hone your skills without the Sharingan, let's saw. Though they will help me improve a lot. I can learn things twice as quicker, and I won't have to worry about missing things. Argued Haruka. It was now Naruto's turn to sigh, Haruka if you continue thinking like this, you will never make it as a shinobi. Haruka crossed her arms, why not? Naruto then activated his Sharingan, the Sharingan is a fabulous tool, but it's just a tool. Like a sword it can easily be tossed away. Let's say you face opponent that is too fast for you. You may be able to predict his movements, but can you move fast enough? As well the Sharingan takes a toll on your chakra, so you have to be able to fight without it. That's what we focus now in your youth, we focus on your skills without the Sharingan. So once you get it, then you won't have to do all this. Then the Sharingan will just complement the skills you already have. Haruka nodded absorbing all this information, I guess that makes sense, did you have to do all this big brother? Naruto nodded, yeah, but I really didn't have anyone to teach me until I met Shisui. So, you should consider yourself lucky. Haruka was a bit astonished, wow. You taught yourself? Haruka looked at the ground a bit disappointed, man. Dot I thought I used to be good, but you're so amazing. I'll never catch up to you. Naruto then hit her across the back of her head. Haruka glared at Naruto, what was that for? You need to stop beating yourself. I'm gonna give you the same advice I gave Sasuke. If you keep comparing yourself to others, then you will never achieve anything. Set a goal, and stick to it. No matter what anyone says, okay? Haruka you will become stronger than me, only if you have the determination to do it. Explained Naruto. Haruka just smiled at her brother, wow you always know what to say big brother. I guess you're right. Though that doesn't solve my problem with my Jinjutsu. I mean most your Jinjutsu do have to do with the Sharingan. Naruto stopped and blinked. Then he face-palmed, I guess you have a point Haruka. Dot though you should at least work on detecting them. Haruka was gonna protest, when suddenly a brown-haired girl appeared in front of them, Naruto come on, we're gonna be late for sensei's meeting. Naruto looked over at Yukumo and smiled. He pointed toward her, she could help you with your Jinjutsu. 
I mean she doesn't even have the Sharingan, and she is capable of casting ones better than mine. Haruka gaped like a fish, no way. Are you really that good Yukumo? What about your pale teammate? Is he also good at Jinjutsu? Yukumo blushed at the praise, but recompassed herself, Sai isn't the best at Jinjutsu, but he can handle himself. As well I could give you a few pointers if you want, my clan does specialize in Jinjutsu. Yukumo then turned her attention to Naruto, Naruto let's go, we have to go to our meeting. Naruto sighed, fine. Haruka go home, and take a shower. Then head to the academy, and don't be late. I'm tired of Haruka scolding me because you're always late. Haruka nodded, and started to run to the orphanage. As she ran she yelled, no promises. Naruto clenched his fist in the air, you better not be lat. Yukumo grabbed Naruto, and begun to run to their meeting point, shut up, and let's go. Team 11 meeting point. Sai was standing at the same place, where they had originally taken their genin test. As he looked around, he let in all the emotions of the past couple of months soak in. It was an odd thing for him, he had been trained to never feel emotions. Though this new team, has brought something that he hadn't felt since him. As he looked around he begun to recall the mission they had taken. After the big double mission they had taken, they returned to mostly D rank. Taking a C rank here and there. As he thought about the missions in Wave and Waterfall, he was wishing he had taken a bigger role. He had seen how Yakumo and Naruto had gotten closer, and he felt a bit left out. Sai sighed, he didn't know what to think. He had just gotten back from giving a report earlier that day. He had been ordered by Lord Danzo to keep tabs on Naruto. At first he didn't know what was so special of the not-so-favorited son of the fourth Hokage. Though after fighting alongside him, he begun to understand Danzo's interest. The boy was such a genius with and without a Sharingan. Being able to analyze a situation so quickly and find an appropriate strategy for it. His ninjutsu, jinjutsu, and vuinjutsu were all superb. His tajutsu might be a bit lacking, but his kenjutsu made up for it. Then came his Sharingan, Sai had heard stories about the Dinjutsu. Even in the stories they weren't as powerful as how Naruto used it. It seemed like Naruto always knew the perfect time to use it and how to use it. Though that wasn't what intrigued Sai. What really intrigued Sai was Naruto himself. He had watched how he always left quite the impact on people, including himself. Sai had never really befriended someone before, but he had found it really easy to bond with him. Once he bonded with him he found it easier and easier to bond with others. He kept reading his books, and it helped him a bit to understand all this. Sai didn't know if it was right or wrong, but he easily found his loyalty moving from Danzo to Naruto. Sai's thoughts were interrupted when both his teammates appeared in front of him, Yukumo you don't have to be so pushy Dadabeo. Yukumo hit the side of his head, I wouldn't have to if you weren't always late, seriously you're becoming like the second Kakashi. That really isn't a bad thing. Retorted Naruto. If you don't include all that material he reads. Spoke Sai with a soft smile. Naruto groaned in disappointment, while Yukumo laughed in approval, even Sai agrees with me. Sai I thought we were friends. Asked Naruto. Sai just gave him one of his usual smiles, as he pulled out his book, yes, and as friends it's in my best interest to look after you whiskers. Naruto sighed, I guess I can't argue against your stupid logic, so. Yamato suddenly appeared in front of them, I'm glad I'm not late, and glad you're not either Naruto. Naruto sweat dropped, come on I'm not really that bad. Yamato waved him off, okay here's the deal, I have nominated you three to the Chunin exams. Here are the application forms for the exam. The exams will take place in one week at the academy at 10 o'clock in the morning. The Chunin exams already? Asked Yakumo. Yamato nodded, yes I believe that all three of you are ready to take the exams, even if you don't make it. It will be a great experience which would help you on your shinobi careers. I believe we're ready sensei. Stated Sai. This took the rest of the team a bit by surprise, since I wasn't the one to usually say things like that. Why so? Asked Yamato a bit curious. The Chunin exams usually consist of some teamwork, and I believe we excel in that area. As for individual skills we are all quite skilled in our own areas of expertise. So I believe we are completely ready sensei. Naruto smiled at Sai, yeah, I couldn't have said it any better Sai. Yamato smiled at his team, you know guys I really wasn't sure about taking a team at first, but you sure make it a lot of easier. Sinesi, well you lucked out because you got the best of the bunch. Claimed Yakumo having had her confidence reassured. Well I'm glad you think that way because as I said the exams are in a week. So this week you have the whole week off. 
use it to train a little and prepare, but most importantly rest. If you need any advice don't hesitate to talk to me. Yamato formed a hand seal, this meeting is over, so you can all go home, so see you in a week. Yamato then disappeared in a poof of smoke. Naruto looked at his remaining teammates, how about we go get something to eat? Then we can talk about some training we should do before the Chunin exams. Yukumo nodded, that's a good idea, so where do you guys wanna go eat? I think it was Sai's turn to choice. Naruto and Yukumo both gazed at Sai for an answer. Sai didn't show it, but he felt a bit uncomfortable being put on the spot, I don't know. Come on Sai, don't be a buzzkill just pick a place. Raymond, BBQ, Dango, you name it. Responded Naruto as his hand made its way through his spiky red hair. Um how about some Dango? I seem to have gotten quite the sweet tooth. Sai finally decided, which caused Yukumo to cheer, alright guys. Let's go. Team 11 made their ways down the street until they came across a box that was following them. Does anyone notice the box? Asked Sai. Yukumo nodded, while Naruto just sighed, come out Kanohimaru, you ain't full and no one. The box suddenly exploded, and Kanohimaru appeared. You've got quite the sharp eye boss. I see why you're such a skilled ninja. Yukumo and Naruto both sweat dropped, while Sai gave him a creepy smile, so you've got another brat, Whiskers. You seem to have an eye for the loud ones, huh? Hey I'm not loud. Yelled Kanohimaru causing Naruto to sweat drop even more. Kanohimaru, shouldn't you be in class? Asked Naruto. Kanohimaru shook his head, we got the day off boss. As well I was hoping you could train me a bit more. Teach me another jutsu. Naruto shook his head, no can't do Kanohimaru, I've got something important coming up. So, I'm a bit short on time. Though if you want I could teach you something after it. Kanohimaru sighed, that's okay. As long as you teach me something cool too. Yukumo rose her eyebrow, you're teaching this one too? You're only a gen Naruto, you've got to slow down, or you end up as a Jounin sensei soon. Naruto laughed, I wouldn't be that crazy I just get along with Kanohimaru. We're quite similar. What do you mean? Asked Sai. Well, being the son of Hokage can be a bit tough. So I can understand what he's going through. Right Kanohimaru? Kanohimaru shook his head, totally boss. Hey is this girl your girlfriend? Yukumo and Naruto blushed furiously, while Sai studied them for a minute. Then Naruto shook his head, no of course not Kanohimaru, we're just teammates. As well Naruto has that little girlfriend in Waterfall anyways. Added Sai. Naruto glared at Sai, it's been four months, I thought we were over it. Yukumo eased up a little, how do you expect us not to tease you, you were blushing as bright as tomato. Come on you know you like her. Kanohimaru then spoke up, well that makes sense boss, this girl must be much prettier than her. Because to be truthful she isn't that pretty. Naruto fascipamed, as Yukumo's eyebrow furiously ticked. Clenching her fist, she even made Sai back up a little bit, I'm not going through that again. Kanohimaru. Yes, boss. Run. Kanohimaru was confused until he took a good look at the fuming Yukumo. Kanohimaru screamed in fear and begun to run as fast as his legs could carry him. Naruto and Sai watched as Yukumo chased after the surprisingly fast Kanohimaru. Should we help him? Asked Sai. I don't know. Dot. I thought you said we always helped a comrade. Asked Sai. He isn't our comrade yet. Then Naruto sighed, I guess you have a point let's go. Naruto and Sai chased after Yukumo and Kanohimaru. The Sand Siblings. Naruto and Sai dashed through the streets, where they heard a yell not too far away. Turning the corner, they saw Yukumo with a kunai in her hand, and a boy in a cat-looking suit holding Kanohimaru by the collar. I said let the brat go. Demanded Yukumo. The boy holding up Kanohimaru just chuckled, I don't know, this brat just bumped into me. Maybe I should teach him a lesson. I really hate brats. Kankuro, you're gonna get us in trouble. The blonde haired girl scolded Kankuro. Come on Tamari take it easy. I'm just gonna teach the brat a lesson. Defended Kankuro as Kanohimaru began to look at him fearfully. What if he? He won't find out. Assured Kankuro. Naruto got in front of Yukumo and spoke, let the boy go or else. Kankuro was a bit annoyed at the boy's attitude or else what kid. Naruto activated his Sharingan, I said let the boy go. Kankuro didn't notice it right away, but Tamari did, what's wrong with his eyes, they're suddenly red. I told yo Kankuro eyes widen as suddenly he was a dark pitch place, and all he could see was that kid's eyes. 
the vision was only for a brief second, but Kankuro knew something was up, my body. I can't barely move anything. Kankuro tried to move his body, but he felt like he was trying to move through very thick sand. The thought sent a chill down his spine, until suddenly he felt a blade against his throat. Tamari was shocked at the speed the kid moved, in a few seconds he had moved from where he was standing, and no had a blade against his brother's throat. She subconsciously moved her arm toward her fan. I told you to drop the boy. Responded Naruto. What did you do to me? Asked Kankura as he struggled to move. Naruto grabbed Konohamaru and jumped away, Jinjutsu. Now tell me what San Shinobi are doing in the Leaf Village. Especially since they seem to pick on little kids. Tamari having realized her brother was under a Jinjutsu, came near him and released it. Kankuro fell to his knees. This kid is gonna pay. We're here for the Chunin exams. We apologize for the conflict we may have caused. It's just my brother. Can be an idiot. Explained Tamari. Kankuro growled at the comment, I'm not an idiot, and it's the kid's fault. He ran into me. Naruto sighed and looked at Konohamaru, apologize. What? Are you crazy? Declared Konohamaru. You heard him squirt. Apologize. Added Yukumo. Konohamaru glared at Kankuro for a second before he apologized, sorry I ran into you. I should have paid attention. Kankuro crossed his arms, whatever brat, you're just lucky this kid came to rescue you. Naruto then looked to his right toward the tree, Sasuke you can come out you know, as well the same goes for you redhead. Sasuke who had been watching the whole affair looked over to his right, there's no way, I didn't even notice this kid. Who is he? Sasuke eyed the red-headed kid, with a gourd on his back. They both jumped out of the tree. The redeated boy eyed Kankuro, I leave you alone for one second and you cause this. I should kill you for this. Kankuro's eyes widen in terror, Gar I'm sorry. Tamari also shook in fear, Gar you know how much of an idiot Kankuro can be. Just ignore it please. Gar sighed in annoyance, fine, as for you. Gar pointed at Naruto and Sasuke, what's your name, and yours too. Naruto and Sasuke both eyed each other, when Sasuke spoke up, it's common courtesy to give your own name first, don't you think? Gar Sabaku. Sasuke Ichiha. Naruto Uzumaki. Then I look forward in seeing you in the exams. Gara turned around and begun walking away, Tamari, Kankuro let's go. Tamari and Kankuro both nodded and begun to walk with their younger brother. Konohamaru finally let out a big breath of air, wow, that was intense. Konohamaru go home, I'll talk to you later. Konohamaru nodded and raced off to do other things. Yakumo then pointed her finger into Sasuke's chest, why were you spying on us? Sasuke blushed a little, but he quickly hid it. I just heard all the commotion and came to check it out. When I saw you guys start to engage the sand ninja, I stuck around to see if you guys needed some help. Sai who hadn't said anything finally spoke up, that boy at the end, he was very strange. Did you guys catch the way he talked to his teammates? The three other genin nodded and Naruto spoke up, it was like they were afraid of him. Yeah they will have to be a team to look out for in the exams. Said Yukumo. So you guys are taking it too. Well good luck, I got some stuff to do. Said Sasuke as he begun to walk away. Though Naruto suddenly grinned, are you sure you don't want to tag along? I bet Yukumo wouldn't mind. Sasuke sped up a little, I don't see why that would cause me to stay. Sai even started to chuckle, how about it Yukumo? You want up bit to tag along? Yukumo looked away, guys. Naruto and Sai both exploded in laughter, as Sasuke and Yukumo glared at them. Yukumo apologized to Sasuke as he left. Then she went over to both her teammates and started to scold them, what your problem? And Sai, Naruto is rubbing off on you too much. Sai shrugged his shoulders, it's just a little teasing, I read in my book that it's a gesture of friendliness in close friends. Naruto patted her on the back, his book is never wrong, wasn't that what you said Yukumo? When I tried to throw it away, Kurama can be good. Yukumo crossed her arms, you're lucky I'm only staying because we're getting Dango. Team 11 then made their way to the Dango shop. Though before Naruto turned the corner he looked over to a tree branch not too far away. Then suddenly a shadow dashed through the buildings. Naruto frowned, strange. Dot was the Dananbu? Naruto you coming? Asked Yukumo having noticed Naruto stopped walking. Naruto just nodded and caught up with his team. Meanwhile at the tree branch two boys and a girl, all with sound symbols on their forehead protectors, let out a big breath. Dosu, you think he noticed us? Asked the boy with two holes in his hand. 
the boy he was talking to, had a strange device on one of his arms, I don't know Zaku, but if he was able to sense us, that kid is good. The girl with them then decided to voice her opinion, yeah, I guess we really have to look out for him. The Ichiha that looks talented as well, isn't on that redeeds level. Zaku nodded, yeah. Kin you might be right. That kid we have to look out for him, as well that San Genin. Something's off about him. The sound genin kept discussing their actual mission, while not too far away a figure raced through the tree line. Dressed in anbu gear he made his way to the outside of the village. Appearing at an abandoned viewing he raced inside. In the middle of that building was a huge opening that led down. Quickly jumping through the opening he made his way down. Jumping off the side he landed right in the middle of a platform. Where a man with a white shirt, with a black robe stood there with a cane. The man turned around revealing that his right eye was bandaged, and his chin had an X-mark scar. Report. The Anbu knelt in front of Danzo, Lord Danzo, it seems that your suspicions on Sai were accurate. Danzo's expression didn't change, elaborate. I've been following him for a month, and I've noticed he left things out of the report. I can't say whether or not they're important, but they're more important than the stuff he's reported. As well he seems to have set up a closer relationship with not just the target, but the girl too. I believe he's slowly starting to betray us, whether he realizes it or not. Answered the Anbu. Danzo turned around, then we must get rid of him. The Anbu didn't flinch, should I do it tonight? Danzo shook his head as he walked away, no, that would be too suspicious. Take him out during the Chunin exams, the second exam. Then it won't look as suspicious, and if you can help it don't kill Naruto. I can't have the yandame on my throat. If it can't be helped though, then make sure you take his eyes. The Anbu nodded, and he disappeared in a puff of smoke. One week later. Chunin exams. Team Eleven was making their way to the academy. As they approached, Naruto was the one to look up at the building. he begun to think about the past, before their sensei walked up to them from afar. I'm glad you all decided to show up. We're in this as a team, didn't we tell you that sensei? Said Yukumo as she ran her fingers through her hair. Sai just nodded, and Naruto smirked, so, I'm guessing you're not just here to wish us luck? Yamato nodded, yeah, I was making sure you all showed up, if one of you didn't, then none of you would have been allowed in. That was pretty obvious and say, you told us remember? Spoke out Sai. Yamato chuckled nervously, yeah I guess I did. Kakashi told me not to, but I guess I can't help it sometimes. Well good luck in there. I might see you on the other side. Yukumo playfully smacked Yamato as she walked in, don't joke like that sensei, there's no way we would die. As long as we're together as a team. Of course. Sai, Yukumo, let's go. Naruto then walked in with Yukumo and Sai. Yamato watched as his three students walked in, I kind of hope they don't become Chunin, might not be as entertaining without them. Maybe I could get them on Anbu squad? Inside. Team Eleven made their way up to the second floor, when they came across a group of kids huddled by a door. They watched as two genin blocked the exit. Sai was just about to go in, when Yukumo grabbed his shoulder, Sai it's a jinjutsu. Those two there are under a hinge. Sai looked up at the sign, then his expression widened, you're right, we're obviously only on the second level. Naruto then walked across the little herd, and made his way to the stairs. Silently motioning his team to follow him, they did. Making their way up the stairs, they were surprised that the only door on this level was their door. Naruto looked at Yukumo and Sai, and watched how Yukumo looked a bit nervous. While Sai had his emotionless mask on. Naruto sighed, and he pushed the door open. Walking in they were surprised by the number of people. Naruto blinked, wow. Yukumo nodded while Sai spoke up, I guess we're not the only ones taking this. Naruto scanned the room until his eyes landed on a teal-haired girl. Naruto without thinking made his way to FK. Yukumo suddenly sighted Naruto, he's obviously got a thing for her. Yukumo and Sai followed Naruto as they made their way to FK's team. FK's expression changed as she watched Naruto walk over to here, he's coming over here? I didn't think he would. Dot oh no what do I say? What if he's mad about the kiss? Hey, FK. It's crazy to see you here of all places. Spoke Naruto as he embraced FK in a hug. FK blushed as she returned the hug, yeah I know, Shibuki thought it would be wise to send us here for the Chunin exams. You know since. Dot. Naruto let go of her, yeah I know. Suddenly FK's teammates interrupted them, hey Naruto. Great to see you man. Spoke Hoki. Naruto I'm not sure whether to be glad or not to see you here. 
spoke Goro with a grin. Naruto gave them both a hug, it's nice to see you guys. Even though it's been a few months, it's crazy to think about it. Yeah it is, isn't Naruto? Spoke Yukumo as she walked into their conversation, with Sai behind her. Yukumo. Sai. It's nice to see you guys. Spoke FK as she gave them both a hug. Goro didn't give either of them a hug because he remembered where they were. Guys I don't think this is the place for hugs. All of them looked around as some of the other genins glared at them. They all sweat dropped, and Naruto spoke. I see your point Goro. Then suddenly Naruto watched as Team 7 walked in. Sasuke noticed him, and was about to walk over before he was attacked by Ino. The two teams watched as most of the rookies gathered at the entrance, creating quite the commotion. Not the smartest bunch. Spoke Hoki. Naruto shook his head, don't underestimate, they're more than they meet the eye. All of them. Naruto then watched as a silver-headed boy with glasses walked over to them, hey you rookies take it easy. Who do you think you are? Demanded Kiba. Hinata then tried her best to scowl Kiba, Kiba. It's alright, my name's Kabuto, and I think it would be wise for you guys to calm down. If you want I could even help you out. Said Kabuto. Sasuke then eyed him for a second, before Ino spoke up, what do you mean? Well I've taken this exam seven times, so I've got quite the info about almost anyone here. Seven times? You must suck. Retorted Kiba as he looked away. Shikmaru then voiced his opinion, still that makes him a veteran here. He must know the test inside out. Exactly. Said Kabuto as he pushed his glasses in. Sasuke then walked up to him, do you have information on Shinobi? Kabuto nodded, he pulled out some cards, these cards here have information on almost anyone. They're my own creation, just give me looks, village, or simply a name. Everyone around watched interested in this silver-haired shinobi, especially Naruto, there's no way a genin can get this type of information. Even if Kabuto is the adopted son of the chief medic of belief. Sasuke thought about it for a minute before he said a few names, Gara of the Sand, Lee Rock of Belief. Dot and Naruto Uzumaki of Belief. Yukumo then gasped, what's he doing? Sai shook his head, he's getting information on what he thinks are his biggest rivals. You can't blame him, we aren't exactly on his side this time round. FK looked at Naruto, are you alright with this? Naruto shrugged his shoulder, I don't care, but I don't like how this guy has so much information. Ah too bad, you even now the ruins the fun. Alright first one. Gara of the sand said Kabuto as he pulled out a card, and begun to spin it with chakra. Stopping the card he pulled it up, since he's a newcomer from a foreign country I don't have much info but. Dot. It seems he returned from all of his missions without a scratch. Mission history, 8C rank, and 1B rank. Wow that's impressive for a genin. Kabuto pulled out another card, next is Rock Lee of the Leaf. Last year he gained attention as a talented genin, but he did not participate in the exams. Like you guys, this is his first time. On his team are Niji Hayuga and Ten Ten also considered highly skilled. His best skill seems to be Tojutsu, but nothing else is impressive. Naruto watched as the kid he was talking about grit his teeth, and his teammate, the Hayuga, then squinted his eyes in an angry twitch, can't blame them, he's giving out a lot of info. Alright last one up Naruto Uzumaki. Dot Kabuto then pulled out a third card, Naruto Uzumaki is under the team of a man known as Yamato, with his teammates being Yukumo Kurama and Sai. Dot wow this kid has completed 1B rank mission and 1A rank mission. Both of them a success. High number of D ranks and not too many C ranks. Naruto Uzumaki formerly Naruto Namek is the son of the 4th Hokage. Naruto watched as many kids begun to look at him. This kid is highly skilled in ninjutsu and jinjutsu, he has a kekai jenkai too. Dot it's the Sharingan. Kabuto looked up at Sasuke hoping for a reaction, I guess he already knows. This is something I should tell Arachimaru. One last thing, he's in the bingo book as a high B-ranked ninja for taking Zabuza Mamachi's executioner blade. Naruto closed his eyes as he heard a bunch of gasps and received a few glares from the mist and the rock ninjas. Great. I guess he would be the ninja to beat in this exams. Though you shouldn't just look out for him. Explained Kabuto as he pulled out another card, you see here, there are many ninjas from every great nation, have come to take the ninja exams. Even villages like Waterfall, Grass, and Rain have sent some ninjas. They're all filled with talented ninja. Mito pointed at the sound village, what about this one? Kabuto looked at the village, don't worry about that one, they're fairly new. I won't expect them to send any strong ninjas. 
Naruto having heard enough turned to his teammates and took a look around the room, I guess we're gonna be a target in these exams. Sai looked around also and noticed some glares from their own village, I guess the fact that you've become quite the name, have even some of our own ninja targeting us. Naruto sighed and looked at FK's team, if we get a chance, I think it would be best if we team up. Hoki and Goro nodded, it seems fair enough, though if we have to fight you understand. Yukumo answered for Naruto, yeah we understand. Alright maggots. It's time to take the exam. The proctors will assign you a seat, and you guys will take the exam. Explained Ibuki. By the way my name's Ibuki and I'll be the protector of the first exam. Naruto got his number and moved to his seat. His surprise when he ends up sitting right by FK, um good luck FK. FK nodded, you too Naruto. Naruto looked around and rubbed the back of his head, I know this isn't the time, but after that kiss. I was wondering if you might want to get a bite to eat? Maybe show you around my village? FK thought he was gonna yell at her or something, but she smiled, like a date. Naruto blushed, I guess so. FK smiled, sure, but you're buying. Naruto smiled as his nerves finally calming down, of course, a gentleman is supposed to treat the lady. Ibuki then interrupted them and handed out the exam. He then begun to explain the test and how it would work. After the test, don't really have the time to write the whole first exam, and I'm sure all of you have seen it. I really wouldn't change much, so sorry to those who might have wanted it, but I'm skipping it. Naruto was standing outside his assigned gate with his team. He glanced over at Yukumo and Sai as they were going over their stuff. Even though he felt he should be happy, this exam just felt off. The Gara kid, those people watching them, Kabuto, and that woman he had seen at the introduction of the second exam. Naruto recalled how the women had caught the kunai thrown at Kibabai, the proctor, Anko. That was what had Naruto worked up. That woman has me so worked up. But over what a freaky tongue. No, it's something more. It's like evil itself, like the time Ito let out a bit of the Nine Tails chakra. Naruto then pulled out a kunai and looked into the reflection. He stared into his Sharingan eyes, then he pierced his thumb pulling some blood. Making sure his teammates weren't looking he unzipped the zipper on his left shoulder, that no one seemed to question about the fact he had a zipper on his shoulder. Naruto shrugged the thought as he wiped some blood on the summoning tattoo. Crouching on the ground he flashed through some hand seals, summoning Jutsu. Slamming his hand onto the ground, a small ceiling spiral appeared. Then a small crow appeared from it. The crow had his left eye closed and only eyed Naruto with his right. Crow, I need you to look after someone. Pulling out a picture, he handed it to the crow. The crow nodded, all right Naruto, do you want me to use that jutsu if necessary? Naruto shook his head, no, if possible just use the knockout and jutsu programmed into the Sharingan. Only use Kodo as last resort. I'll be gone for five days, so stay out of sight. If you're spotted dispel the summoning right away. The crow nodded, who's my target? Naruto pinged at the picture of a girl with big black eyes. Her eyebrow were very femininely shaped, just like Shisui. Her hair was pitch black and tied in a ponytail. She was wearing a dark blue kimono shirt with spots of orange. She wore a matching skirt and blue sandals. This is your target, Haruka. You will watch over her okay? The crow's expression widened, the little girl has grown up, how old is she? Eight. Naruto shook his head, not for another week. The crow then asked one final question, who do I look out for? Naruto sighed, that's the problem I don't know. I'm not sure, but someone has been following my team. As well there are too many skepti people in the exams. I feel like something big is gonna happen. The crow nodded, I'll be on my way Naruto, you need me don't hesitate to summon me. As well remember you still have the toads, I'll admit they're a powerful ally. The crow then disappeared into the tree line. Naruto come on the gate's opening. Yelled out Yakumo as her and Sai approached the gate. Naruto nodded and grabbing his pack. He sealed it into a scroll which he placed it into his pouch. He then grabbed their earth scroll and tossed it to Yakumo. Here Yakumo you're the best one to keep it. You can easily hide with a Jinjutsu, as well many would underestimate you since you're a girl. Yakumo nodded and Sai agreed, smart. Anything to say Naruto? Naruto gulped and nodded, be ready at all times. Dot I have a bad feeling about this. I thought you weren't nervous Yakumo was cut off as I interpreted, he's not talking about that Yakumo. This exam is just too skepti, right Naruto? Naruto nodded, yeah. Yakumo looked at both her teammates, you're gonna explain all this to me once we get inside. 
the gate finally opened, and Team Eleven dashed inside. Naruto activated his Sharingan, let's do this. Hinata, Kiba, and Shino stood on a tree branch waiting as patiently as they could. When suddenly a rain team came across them. A boy with black spiky hair, who seemed to be the leader of the group, called them out, hey you leave scum. Give up your scroller else. While the boy talked Akamaru barked something, and Kiba smirked, these guys are so foolish to think they can sneak up on a team specialized for tracking. Kiba. Dot please don't get so cocky, we haven't trapped them yet, managed out Hinata. While Shino nodded, yes, Kiba you shouldn't be overconfident quite yet. Dot now. Kiba smirked as he watched their plan fall into place, the team was suddenly ambushed by a bunch of leeches falling from the trees. The other boy in the team screamed out, what's going my chakra? The rest quickly fell to their knees and collapsed. Kiba smirked, Hinata which one has the scroll? Hinata activated her by Akigen. The girl who was standing way in the back. Kiba rushed over and picked the scroll of the girl. Kiba smiled widely while Akamaru cheered, they've got the heaven scroll we were looking for. Let's go. Team 10. Shigamaru, Ino, and Choji stood in a clearing, crouched together in a circle. Shigamaru took the lead in the discussion, all right guys, I'm gonna be honest, we really aren't the strongest out of all these bunch. So we should work on targeting those with poor teamwork or just poor ninjas. So we should avoid any strong ninja. Concluded Ino. Shigamaru nodded, exactly. So we should avoid teams like the Sand Ninja, Rock Lee's team, and Dot rookie team 11. Added Choji. Ino frowned a bit, do you guys really believe what they said about Naruto? I mean I remember back at the academy he was quite talented, but is he really better than Sasuke? I mean Sasuke was the rookie of the year in our class. Shigamaru sighed, Naruto was always more, then he let on. I knew about his Sharingan cause I was close friends with him, but he didn't trust many people with it. Not even his own parents. That tells you a lot about a person. So I wouldn't be surprised with anything that comes with Naruto. Trust me Ino, we should avoid his team, it's not just him that's talented, but so are his teammates. Their teamwork could rival ours. Ino still wasn't satisfied, I don't know, I asked Mito about it a while back, but she didn't say anything. Just that she got along better with her brother. I wonder what happened. Well we don't got time to waste, we need to either find a team or get some food going. Said Choji as he pulled out a bag of chips. Both Shikamaru and Ino sweat dropped. Team 7. Sasuke was breathing a little hard. Mito, Sakura, and him were racing through the trees trying to find another team. They had just came across a rain ninja, which had caught both Mito and Sakura in a Jinjutsu. Even with his Sharingan he found it a bit hard to find a little sucker. Though at the end he was able to get him, it still wasn't worth it because the kid had no scroll. Mito signaled to stop in a clearing, both Sakura and Sasuke jumped in it. What are you doing Mito? Asked Sakura a bit annoyed by having to stop. Mito brushed her off, we need a game plan, we can't just run wildly in here. We almost got caught by one mere genin over there. We need to set up where we're going and how. As well we need a password in case one of us gets separated. Sasuke sat down cross-legged and begun to think, you're right, Mito. Sakura crossed her arms in a grin, yeah. Wait she's right? Sasuke nodded, we need a better plan than just running around here. Sakura thought for a second before she responded, I guess you're right, Mito. Mito then begun talking, okay so I think we should slowly make our way to the tower. We're bound to run into some ninja, since that's where everyone has to go. We should get there in two days tops and just ambush any teams that we come across. I think we should get there as soon as possible because there's bound to be other teams to think of the same plan added Sakura. Sasuke nodded, so, it's settled then, now let's set up a password. How about a question? Asked Mito. Sasuke nodded, okay the question is, when does a ninja give up? Mito and Sakura were a bit surprised by the question, we don't know. A ninja never gives up, as long as we have a reason to fight, our will of fire will lead us past the point of giving up. The three sucked in the information, before once again Mito took point and sped off. They never once noticed the grass pipe sticking out of the ground not too far away. Team 11. Team 11 stood hidden near the ground as they slowly made their plan. Naruto looked at both Sai and Yukumo, Sai, I'm really gonna put you on the spot here. I need you to create as many ink animals as you can, snakes, rats, small birds, and anything else that could work around here. I need you to send them out to scout for teams up ahead. Meanwhile we will move toward the tower. 
Sai nodded as he pulled out his scroll and begun to draw a bunch of animals, I'm on it. Naruto then faced Yukumo, Yukumo I know you're not used to taking lead, but that's the position you will be taking while we run. I'll be behind you, while Sai is in the far back. Yukumo looked a bit nervous, why would you put me in front? That's usually your position or size. As well why risk the scroll, by putting me in front? Naruto smiled, exactly, that's why we're putting you in front. Not many teams will expect it. As for why I'm in the middle, I can help you if it gets rough, or you have the easiest time hiding in the middle of the chaos. Yukumo suddenly made sense of his plan, that's really smart Naruto. Dot. Naruto nodded, I know. You done Sai? Sai nodded, let's go. Naruto grabbed his shoulder, Sai, I need to tell you something. Sai turned around and faced Naruto. Naruto then let out a really loud sigh, I'm sorry I haven't told you this, but I had my doubts about you in the beginning. As well I suspect that you have connections with Danzo, correct? Sai looked around, and he just nodded, yeah. I've tried to report less on you, in order to stop spying on you, but I think that may have caused more harm. Naruto was a bit shocked, you've been reporting on me? What do you mean reporting less on me? Sai looked around once again, Naruto I was first assigned to spy on you, but after a while of being your teammate, I find it too hard to do it. I finally understand what it means to have a real team. Family, and I've tried to stop, but it's not that easy. Dot I'm sorry, Naruto. Yukuma was confused, are you serious Sai? Though why? As well who's this Danzo guy? Naruto looked at Sai and Yukumo, if you've truly committed to getting out of Danzo's grasp Sai, I'll help you out the best I can. I know it isn't easy. Dot is for you Yukumo, Danzo is a very dangerous man. He's one of the leaf elders but he's. Dot very manipulative of his shinobi. Even though he claims the best for the village, he's always after power. Yukumo stood silent for a minute, how do you know this? Naruto closed his eyes and reopened him revealing his Manjikum Sharingan, he gave me these. This is what I wanted to show you Sai. Though I hope it won't be a fatal mistake. Sai stared down Naruto's reformed Sharingan, what is that? Dot. Naruto smirked for a second, if you promise to keep this knowledge out of Danzo's hands, I might tell you. Sai nodded, I promise Naruto anything you don't want Danzo to know, he won't. I don't work loyally anymore for Danzo. Yeah, as well you never explained it to me Naruto. When you first showed it to me, you told me it was just a forbidden stage of the Sharingan. What did you mean? Asked Yakumo remembering the mission in Waterfall. You were also so desperate to hide it from everyone. Naruto sat down on a tree branch, I'll try to be brief, and I'm still desperate to keep it a secret. I've only told Yakumo, Mito, and now you sigh. I haven't even showed Haruka yet, and I tell her everything. Sai suddenly felt a bit relieved, is this what trust, supposed to run in a family? Naruto I won't betray this trust and kindness you show me. Even if it costs me my life. This is the forbidden stage of the Sharingan, the Manjikum Sharingan. In order to achieve this stage, you must go through severe emotional trauma. Like the type of trauma you receive when you kill the closest person to you. Dot. Both Yukumo and Sai looked down in sadness. Yukumo clutched the back of her neck, my parents. Dot. While Sai unconsciously reached for his ninja pouch and gripped his small book, Shin. Dot. Naruto eyed his both teammates, I have a bad feeling we've each gone through that experience, and that's why I decided to tell you today. Not just because of that because I trust both you you with my life, as well you deserve to know. Yukumo then stepped forward, I didn't know until waterfall, but I have a mental monster sealed in my conscious, Sai. If it wasn't for Naruto, I don't think I would have been able to suppress it. I just wanted to let you know. I'm sorry for not telling you. Sai gave both his teammates a smile, I can't blame you too, for not telling me such huge secrets. I was. I still don't look like a trustworthy person, but I will take these secrets to the grave, unless you tell me otherwise. Naruto reached out his fist towards Sai. Sai a bit confused, what are you doing? Naruto sweat dropped, are you serious Sai? I'm obviously looking for a fist bump. Come on. It's a sign of respect and teamwork. Sai raised an eyebrow, but he ended up fist bumping Naruto. Naruto smiled and motioned toward the trees, you guys ready? Let's go. Team 11 raced toward the forest. 15 minutes later. Naruto looked back at Sai for any signs that he might have encountered any teams, Sai shook his head getting the message. Naruto sighed and kept running. Then suddenly he felt two kunai heading toward their direction. 
Naruto's body reacted to cover Yakumo, but then he watched as the kunai were aimed at Sai. Naruto's blue eyes widen, Sai. Look out. Yakumo turned around and watched as Sai barely managed to block one of the kunai and dodge the other. They all jumped on a large tree branch and looked around. Naruto now having activated his Sharingan tried to catch a glimpse of the enemy, I don't see anyone. Yukumo then closed her eyes and tried to sense around, I don't detect any Jinjutsu or people. Maybe it was a trap? Naruto shook his head, if it would have been a trap, then that trap was either perfectly set up to measure Sai's speed or it was just random luck. I really doubt it was either. Naruto looked around, but he still couldn't spot anything. Then that's when he noticed it a black shadow move quickly through the shadows. Naruto flashed through some hand seals, fire release. Fireball jutsu. Naruto launched the fireball right into the tree, burning it. Whatever is back there will now be detectable by the light, or the smoke will force them to come out. Either way it should come out. Team 11 dropped back, and Yukumo shouted, Naruto did you catch something? Naruto nodded, yeah, but I'm not sure who it was. Naruto then watched as a man jumped out of the shadows and into the air. Then suddenly he heard Yukumo shout, guys. Behind us. Naruto turned and watched another man jump out. This man Naruto was able to distinguish that he had orange hair to his shoulders with an Anbu mask on. Naruto then had sort of an idea what was going on, Root? That's impossible. What could they be doing here? There's no way they would know so soon, even if Sai betrayed me. As well they were. Targeting Sai. Sai, Yukumo take the man from behind and I'll engage the other. Shouted Naruto. Yukumo was confused, not that I don't want to help you, but what about the plan? Naruto was suddenly attacked by the other man with a kunai. Pulling out his own, he managed to block a few strikes before he jumped onto another branch, these guys aren't Jen and Yukumo, they're not after our scroll. Yukumo and Sai were evading the other guy, while Yukumo gasped, then are they here to kill us? Sai yelled out to Yukumo, not you Yukumo. But me. Yukumo was confused as they regrouped on another tree branch. Why? Naruto shook his head and looked at Sai, it's how Root works, if one isn't loyal they are eliminated. Right Root. The two masked Anbu appeared on a tree branch not too far away. They both remained silent and just stood in front of them, calculating their every move. While Naruto did the same. The one that had attacked from behind had shoulder-length orange hair and a ponytail. Besides that there wasn't any noticeable traits. The other man though was had the regular Anbu clothing, but with a rather odd black robe underneath. He also wore strange gloves, and he had very short spiky hair. Naruto tried to get an idea on who these two could possibly be, I have no idea who the orange-haired guy is, but the other one wears clothing similar to the Aburam clan. Dot we need to take them out one at a time. Two will work on one, while the last one will distract the second Anbu. Dot. Yukumo, sigh. Dot I don't think we're gonna be able to run. Replied Naruto as he pulled up his right sleeve. He then unsealed his usual orange-handled sword, I want to use the Executioner's Blade, but I don't have enough experience to be facing Anbu level shinobi. I guess Shizui's blade will have to do. Dot. Naruto then turned to both his teammates, he saw the determination in Sai's eyes and the fear in Yukumo's. Yukumo remember everything we've learned since becoming a genin. We've been preparing for something like this for ages. Now it's time for us to work together and take them down. Yukumo looked at Naruto, I don't know. Sai then spoke up, you guys run, they're after me. Dot I'll distract them while you two get away. Naruto shook his head, Sai we can't do that, we're a team, and a team never abandons a comrade. Yukumo you need to pull it together because we need you. Yukumo clutched the kunai in her hand and took a few deep breaths, I can do this. We can do this. Naruto nodded and continued to eye his opponents, Anbu usually consists of high-level Chunin to Jounin level Anbu. Though these are root, so expect them to be Jounin level. Sai, Yukumo you guys will take down the orange-haired guy while I distract the other one. Sai if you have any information on these guys, now is the time to reveal that information. Sai nodded, the orange-haired man is. Sai was cut off as the black-haired Anbu man attacked Sai. Sai was able to pull out his own tanto to block his kunai strike. Yukumo tried to back away, but then she was kicked away by the orange-haired shinobi. As Yukumo was kicked away the orange-haired Anbu tried to attack Sai. Sai was unable to detect the second strike and was stabbed right in the back. The man grinned slightly under his mask, then suddenly Sai exploded in a flock of crows. 
The black-haired man cursed and dispelled the Jinjutsu. Naruto was standing on another branch with Yukumo in his hands and Sai by his side. You two are good. The black-haired man finally spoke, I could say the same for you. Yukumo stood up, Sai let's go. Sai then ran off into the woods with Yukumo behind him. Naruto allowed the orange-haired man to pass by, while he blocked the path of the other man, I will be your opponent. The black-haired man replied in a monotone voice, as he slowly took off his gloves, you picked the wrong opponent to face by yourself. Yukumo and Sai vs orange-haired Anbu. Sai and Yukumo rushed through the forest, Yukumo. This guy we're facing is from the Yamanaka clan, so stay alert for any of their mind jutsus. We can't allow ourselves to be caught by his jutsu. These two ninjas are also one of the most skilled ninjas that Root has. We can't hold back on bit, or we will die. Stated Sai as he continued to run through the tree. He finally hopped on one branch, and Yukumo jumped behind him. Sai, he's coming. 400 feet away. Stated Yukumo as she pulled out a scroll and paintbrush. Sai's eyes widen a bit, you're gonna use that jutsu? Yukumo nodded, I know it's dangerous, but we have no choice. I need you to cover me while I set up the jutsu. Sai nodded and pulled out his own scroll, alright let's do this. The orange-haired man looked back and noticed his comrade was no longer behind him, Torun you better not overdo it. As he looked forward he suddenly watched as a giant pair of tigers attack him. Pulling out his tanto he ducked under the first and stabbed the next one right in the stomach. Pulling out some kunai with some explosive notes, he chucked them at the other tiger. The man jumped on a tree branch and suddenly a huge explosion was heard from behind. Though before he could turn around to admire his work, his attention was suddenly taken to the sky. Two birds were flying toward him with two explosive notes on each on. The anbu barely jumped away in time as the branch was destroyed into little pieces. As the smoke cleared, he saw his target jump to engage him with his tanto. The man reached for his own, but to notice it was gone, he forced me to drop it earlier. The man jumped behind a tree and dashed away. Sai followed close behind as he tried to pin the man in a corner. The man was able to retrieve his tanto and finally stopped running. Jumping on a tree branch he used it to catapult himself toward Sai. He matched Sai's strike and managed to force him back. The man forced Sai onto the defensive. Sai's tanto was knocked out of his hand as he dropped straight down to the ground. The man swiped across barely missing Sai by hair. Smarty dropped straight down to avoid my strike, I see why Danzo chose him. It's a pity he had to betray us, he had lots of potential. Sai jumped straight to the ground and rolled away. Pulling himself back he raced toward Yukumo, breathing hard he had only one thought, hurry up Yukumo, we need to finish him off. Naruto vs Torun. Naruto didn't understand what the man meant by, you picked the wrong opponent to fight against. Naruto just watched carefully as the man pulled off his gloves, revealing that his hands were purple. There must be some trick to his hands. I can't afford to let him touch me. Naruto pulled his sword in front of him and got ready to fight. Then it happened the man came flying toward him. Naruto ducked under the first punch and tried to stab him, but the man kicked his sword away. Naruto rolled to his right and dodged his open palm. As Naruto rolled away he watched as the man's palm slammed into the ground. The tree is being destroyed inside out. Dot no it's being poisoned. Naruto rolled up to his feet and dodged the next set of attacks. Unable to block or catch his fists, Naruto was forced to simply dodge. So my guess of him being from the Aburam clan is correct, but these bugs are barely visible. I can only distinguish them because of my Sharingan's ability to see chakra's color. Naruto dodged another fist and watched as it hit another tree. As well it seems they must be ultra venomous if the poison spread so fast. Naruto shook his head, Tojutsu isn't an option, I don't know if Jinjutsu will work on him. Even though he is from the Aburam clan, there might be the chance he doesn't have full control of the bugs. That's probably why he wears the gloves, since he isn't in sync, then he must have trouble detecting Jinjutsu. Naruto jumped away once again, if Yukumo had faced this guy, he could have been able to break her Jinjutsu. Since insects don't have the five human senses needed for her to cast her Jinjutsu. Naruto then tempted to cast a Jinjutsu on him. As he dodged under a punch, he rushed toward his body at fast speeds. His eyes inches away from his, the three Tamo in his eyes spin furiously. The man's eyes widened before he fell onto the ground. Naruto avoided his falling hand and jumped away. I guess he wasn't as tough as he claimed. Naruto then walked over to his sword. 
Picking it up he turned around to finish the job. To his shock when the man was inches away from touching his left hand. He already dispelled it. Yakumo and Sai vs orange-haired Anbu. Sai dashed through the trees as quickly as possible, we're almost here. He then appeared in the middle of the clearing, and he threw a kunai with an explosive note right into the air. The note exploded signaling Yakumo. Yakumo jumped out of the tree with her Jinjutsu set, Sai, are you ready? Then appeared the other man. He then formed a hand seal. Yakumo Sai didn't finish because his body subtly jerked, and he raced toward Yakumo. Yakumo was shocked, and allowed Sai to cut her across the cheek with a kunai, Sai. What's the big deal? Sai didn't say anything as he pressed the attack. Yakumo then looked over to the Anbu, and noticed that he was slumped against the tree, he used the mind transfer jutsu. Yakumo having let her guard down slipped, and fell right on her back. Yakumo watched in horror as the kunai came closer and closer. She closed her eyes waiting for everything to end, is this the end? Yakumo could hear her own heartbeat racing at a hundred miles per hour, but time passed and the final blow never came. Slowly reopening her eyes she saw that the kunai was inches away from her eye. Rolling to the side she watched as every single muscle in Sai's body was tight. Like he was trying to resist, come on Sai. You can do it. Sai watched from his own mind as he struggled to gain control of his body, there's only one way I'm gonna break out of this. The man whispered in Sai's own mind, give up kid, you're gonna die too. Might as well make this girl's death painless. Sai slowly begun to move the kunai directly in front of his stomach, you should know, fk, I won't allow my comrades to die so easily. Sai then proxied with the little control to stab the kunai right into his stomach. FK released the jutsu, and woke up clutching his stomach too. He clutched his stomach in pains, as blood began to ooze out. Yakumo ran over to Sai and pulled the kunai, Sai. Sai coughed up some blood and he clutched his stomach, Yakumo. Start the jinjutsu, I'll be fine I missed any vital organs. Hurry. Yakumo nodded and retrieved her scroll and flashed through a long series of hand seals. FK stood up and tried to get out of there. Though before he could Yakumo yelled out, too late to run. Demonic illusion. Sea of lava jutsu. FK's eyes widen, and suddenly the world went dark. Jinjutsu. FK woke up, and all around was molten rock. As he peered through the cracks he could see the lava underneath. As he looked around he noticed that everywhere he looked, there was just pieces of rock floating in the lava. Then suddenly he felt the rock below sink a little. He then tried to jump away, but his wound denied him from moving. Following onto his knees he suddenly felt some lava splash onto his hand. His closed his eyes in pain, as the lava melted through his skin right into the bone. Suddenly more lava began to splash all over yelled in pain until he was completely devoured by the lava. Yukumo Sai and Anbu FK. Yukumo was breathing hard as she saw the Jinjutsu take place. She slowly watched as the man's skin slowly crisp up until the bone showed. She turned to her side and puked. Wiping her mouth, she walked over to Sai. Pulling out some medical supplies she began to fix him up. Covering his stomach in bandages he gave Sai a blood pill, you're losing too much blood. Here take a blood pill. Sai just nodded and took the pill. He heard Yukumo say few more things before he collapsed. Yukumo watched him slip into an unconscious state. She sighed and picked him up, we need to get back with Naruto. Though before she left she grabbed a pair of kunai with paper bombs and chucked them at FK's barely alive body. Naruto and Torun. Naruto shunshined away and allowed Torun to barely touch his sleeve. Naruto grabbed his sword and cut off the sleeve of his left arm. He watched as the cut sleeve turned all purple to close. Naruto looks up again and notices Torun speeding onto him. Naruto wielded some hand signs, hidden Miss Jutsu. Torun stopped running as he noticed a mist appear around him. Naruto resealed his sword and unsealed the executioner blade. I can't allow him to touch me. I need to strike from the mist and then take him out. Naruto then shunshined into the mist. Torun looked right, left, behind, and in front. Looking all around he began to feel the heat of the battle, I can't believe this kid was able to copy the hidden Miss Jutsu. I can't allow him to trap me so easily. Torun ripped of his jacket and left himself shirtless. Forming the ram seal, his body slowly began turning to a purplish color. He then grabbed a kunai and got ready for an attack. Then it came, turning to his right he watched as a giant blade fell upon him. He put up his kunai to defend, but it was easily cut in half. Jumping back he avoided the blow. 
Naruto was gonna go for a follow-up kick, but as Sharingan was able to notice the change in his skin, he's wearing an armor of sorts. I can't touch him directly or it will be all over. Naruto then grabbed the executioner's blade and charged his lightning chakra in it. He then threw the sword at Torun. Torun didn't even move as the blade landed to his right. Terrible aim. Naruto didn't say anything as he flashed through some hand seals, water release. Water Ponjutsu. Naruto then shot tons of water toward Torun. Torun's eyes widened realizing his plan. He tried to jump, but suddenly he felt his feet unable to move. He then eyed the sword and noticed it was perfectly lined in a crack that met his feet. He purposely allowed the sword to miss so he could use the lightning chakra to send a shock through my nervous system. Disabling my feet from moving. This kid. The water storm Torun and the lightning blade as Naruto jumped into the air. Torun was electrocuted and he slumped onto the ground. Naruto jumped on the edge of the blade and pulled it while standing on the handle. Pulling it out he used his momentum to launch himself into a tree branch, that was too easy. He cleared the mist and jumped higher into the trees. Deactivating his Sharingan he gave himself a second to breath. Then he felt someone coming from behind, turning around he saw Yakumo carrying an injured Sai. Naruto rushed toward her, what happened? The guy we were facing was from the Yamanaka clan. Sai stabbed himself in order to disable him, while I cast a Jinjutsu replied Yukumo as she set Sai on the branch. Naruto noticed the blood slightly staining the bandage, how bad is it? It isn't infected he just won't stop bleeding. Said Yukumo. Naruto took off the bandages and looked at the wound, I think I might be able to at least stop the bleeding. How? Asked Yukumo. Naruto signed a few hand seals and placed his arms above the wound. They then glowed green, as Naruto's expression went into total concentration, I know enough medical ninjutsu to stop the bleeding. Grandma Tsune taught me the I won't be able to completely heal his wound. Yukuma watched as Naruto continued to slowly stop the bleeding. Then suddenly he stopped and took a deep breath, okay. That should do for now. We should give him a blood pill once he wakes up. I gave him one before he collapsed. Said Yukumo as she too felt tired, I didn't think the Chunin exams would have us fighting Anbu, this is just ridiculous. Naruto nodded, we got lucky they underestimated us. We shall. Naruto suddenly heard the sound of kunai cutting through the air. Turning to his side, he noticed the Torun was still alive. He dodged the first kunai, and the second one struck him right in the arm. Yukumo grabbed Sai. Naruto pulled out the kunai, and he suddenly felt his arm go look down and noticed the bugs were attached to the kunai. Naruto's whole right arm was slowly beginning to get covered in purple. His body suddenly felt numb as he fell to his anbu man walked closer to him, give up the boy, or else I won't extract the poison. No one in this world has the antidote to cure the poison. You'll die a painful death. Naruto was ignoring every single thing as he examined the bugs, they don't inject poison, the bugs themselves are the poison. I just have to kill all of them or get rid of them. Though they're so small it would be almost impossible to get rid of them all. Naruto looked up at the man, never. Dot Yakumo run. Yakumo had Sai on her shoulders as she was standing on a branch away. Give me the boy, and I'll spare this kid. Yakumo just stared down the other man, what do I do? Naruto and Sai would both want to sacrifice themselves so the other would live. This is so difficult, and I'm too tired to cast another Jinjutsu. Naruto stared down the poison as he tried to come up for a solution. He watched as the bugs made their way to his shoulder when it hit him. Naruto closed his right eye and reopened it. Kamui. Naruto then warped away the bugs attached to his arm. It's working. Torun then attacked Yakumo as he tried to get a grasp of Sai. Yakumo jumped away and with her left arm pulled out a kunai. Exchanging a few strikes, Yakumo jumped onto a giant tree and begun to run around the base. Reaching the other side she slid down the base of the tree and right into an opening. She made her way to the other side and placed Sai against a tree. Turning around she got into a position to defend herself. Then out of nowhere the man appeared before her. Yakumo and Torun stared each other down. Then Yakumo pulled out some shuriken and threw them at Torun, Shadow Shuriken Jutsu. The five shuriken she threw turned into twenty, Torun jumped straight in the air where she flashed through some hand signs, Naruto isn't the only one who can use this jutsu, fire release. Fireball Jutsu. A giant fireball erupted from Yukumo's mouth as Torun was unable to dodge. The fireball destroyed the top of three treetops. Yakumo looked around looking for him, when suddenly she turned around noticed he had sunshine behind her. 
She watched in slow motion as Torun was yards away from touching Sai. Yakuma was about to scream Sai's name when she remembered he was unconscious. She raced after him, but she knew she wouldn't get there in time. Then suddenly the air around Sai began to distort. Her eyes widened when she realized Naruto was using that jutsu, Naruto. Naruto finished warping the last bug. Catching his breath he then warped himself away. He suddenly appeared in front of Sai and turned around. He heard Yakumo scream as he stared down Toruno. As Torun was running toward him, how did you get rid of the poison? Like I would tell you. Torun was then just inches away, they both glared each other down, and then Naruto's eyes warped into an eight-rounded star. Time seemed to stop for Naruto as he stood there. If I kill him I won't be able to get any evidence, I can't allow Danzo to keep targeting Sai. Dot. I won't allow something like that to happen again. Naruto's mind flashed to the incident of Shisui's death, never again. Tsukiyomi. Torun was just inches away, until he made the mistake of looking into his eyes, these eye. What are they? Then suddenly everything froze. He stopped running as he looked around, and when he looked up, all he could see was a red moon, and on that moon was the same eight-rounded star he had just seen. Then suddenly his body was tied to a tree. The forest disappeared, and he was standing there tied to the only tree left. As Torun looked around he began to worry, what's going on? Not even my bugs can pierce this jinjutsu for me. What is this? Then the red-headed boy from before appeared before him, you are now stuck in my jinjutsu, in this jinjutsu I control space and the precipitation of time. You might have noticed your bugs can't pierce this jinjutsu? That is because when a day passes in here, only a second passes in the real world. Torun looked horrified at the kid, that's impossible. There's no way that's true. Naruto shook his head, but it is, this is the power of Tsukiyomi, for the next 24 hours you are now my prisoner. Naruto stabbed him right through the stomach, and Torun gritted his teeth. Then five more Naruto's appeared around him. Then for the next hour they continued to stab him again and again. Only 22 hours and 59 minutes to go. Torun couldn't believe it, even after all his training in Root, this was the worst thing to ever happen to him, why don't you just kill me? What do you want? Naruto stabbed him again, I thought you won't ask. Pulling out the sword, he stopped the others too, it's quite simple I want to know who sent you. You're gonna tell me, one way or another. Torun didn't say anything, and Naruto shrugged as he signaled the others to keep going. All you could hear was Torun's screams throughout the Jinjutsu. Quite impressive only 10 minutes left, but that's all I need. Torun didn't reply as he could barely manage to speak, as I told you, I control space here, so I can force you to talk. Naruto rose his right arm and formed a one-handed seal, so talk. Torun felt his whole body jerk forward, Lord Danzo set us to eliminate Sai. Sai was proving to be a traitor by not completely his mission to the letter. We also had second orders, if you were to interfere to steal your eyes. Naruto sighed, that's all I needed to know. Torun stopped running in mid-air and slumped forward and fell straight into unconscious. Naruto fell to his knees and took heavy breaths. He clutched his eyes, that was so exhausting. Yukumo stopped running as she watched the events unfold in front of her. She walked over to Torun's body and was gonna check for a pulse when Naruto grabbed her hand. Stop, his armor is still active. If you touch just one of those bugs, you're good as dead. Yukumo nodded, what happened? Naruto took a heavy breath again and deactivated his Sharingan, I caught him under a Jinjutsu. I was able to find out that it was indeed Danzo who sent them. Yukumo looked a bit confused, I thought we already knew that. Naruto shook his head, yeah, but we have no evidence. I was able to make him confess, but I doubt that would be enough to convict him, since he's probably dead from the mental stress. I just did it, so I can make sure it was him. Yukumo just nodded and looked over at Sai. Walking over she picked him up, let's go. Naruto nodded. He then pulled out some paper bombs and threw them onto his body. The huge explosion finally killed Torun. Yukumo looked over at Naruto, I thought we needed evidence against Danzo. Naruto nodded, he's too loyal, he would never give up Danzo. No matter what happens to him. The only reason I got him to confess was because of the Jinjutsu, as well they probably have cursed seals that unable him to talk. Yukumo looked over at Naruto and finally noticed how exhausted he was. We need to find somewhere to rest. Naruto nodded, yeah, let's go. Team 7. Sasuke stared down the women in front of them. He was breathing a bit heavy as he watched the women start to peel her skin off. 
Sasuke was mortified, why doesn't she die? That fire jutsu should've burned her to crisp. Sasuke looked over to the rest of his team and gazed at a knocked out Mito and Sakura, trying to heal her. Mito had been taken out so easily by that weird finger jutsu, and Sakura isn't exactly the fighting type. Taking his attention back to the women, he watched as a new body appeared, Kukuku Sasuke, you have surely grown, but not enough. You still got ways to go before you catch up to Itachi. Sasuke gritted his teeth, what do you want? Orochimaru chuckled, I'm Orochimaru, and you'll find out soon enough. Though for now I'll leave you a parting gift. Suddenly his neck extended and went flying towards Sasuke Sasuke having been caught of guard was bit right in the neck. He yelled in pain and suddenly a mark appeared on his neck. He slumped forward and fell onto the tree branch. Orochimaru laughed and disappeared. Sakura grabbed both Sasuke and Mito and fled the scene. Outside of Chunin exams. Anko was sitting at the entrance of the exam, enjoying some dango. When suddenly she felt the air behind her shift. What do you want? The Anbu spoke, we found some bodies. Anko chuckled, what's new? Anbu shook his head, this is different. What do you mean? Different? Come take a look. Replied the Anbu as he disappeared. Anko sighed and disappeared. Anko appeared in front of a group of Anbu where three bodies stood. As she went over to them, she suddenly felt overwhelmed, there's no way. Another Anbu spoke up, I know, never seen anything like it. I mean their faces. Are gone. Anko shook her head, that's not it. Notify the fourth Hokage immediately. Make sure no one enters or leaves the forest of death. I repeat no one. I'm going in. What's going on? Asked Don of the Anbu. The Anbu that notified Anko spoke up, it's what I feared. It's Orochimaru of the Sanin, isn't it? Anko nodded, come on we can't allow him to escape. Move. The other two Anbu nodded and disappeared. Anko then ran into the forest, what are you doing here? The fourth Hokage was talking with his wife in his office, what do you want me to do? Kashina crossed her arms, I want you to do more of an effort. He's your son you know. I know, but I don't know what to do. Naruto is just so different. I don't know how to connect with him. Spoke Minato as he ran his fingers through his hair. I'm not having any of it. I've been telling you for months, but you keep giving the same response. Why don't you work on creating a jutsu with him? Asked Kashina. Minato sighed, he doesn't want me to teach him. Kashina grabbed Minato by the collar, I'm not saying to teach him, but work with him. As I said work with him in creating a jutsu. Help him invent something new. He loves to do that. You can't teach him anything he already doesn't know. We both know that. Minato didn't resist, and a light bulb went off in his head, Kashina. That's brilliant. Then we could actually spend time together. Kashina let him go and let out a big grin, I know. So are you in? Minato nodded, yeah, yeah. So Kashina how are you holding up? You've been sick the last couple of days. Kashina nodded, yeah, I know. I might go to the doctor. I've been feeling so sick of my stomach. Minato sighed, I'm glad you didn't return to active duty, I know you want to, but it's been a hard couple of years. Kashina eyed her husband, what do you mean? Minato shook his head, the Achea massacre. I feel like I could have done more, but... Dot. Kashina sat back into her chair, there wasn't anything you could do sweetie, I mean I didn't even see Itachi's betrayal coming. He was always... so committed to protecting the leaf. I still find it hard to believe he did it. Minato closed his eyes, I'm sorry Itachi. Dot. Then suddenly an Anbu appeared in front of them, sir. Minato and Kashina were taken by surprise, what is it? One of Orochimaru's jutsus was spotted outside of the forest of death. We have reason to bell that he has infiltrated the exams. Minato stood up, what? How long ago was this? Just a few minutes ago sir. Minato looked over at Kashina and saw how frightened she looked, Naruto. Mito. Let's go, Kashina continue your day like normal. I don't want to scare anyone, unless it's absolutely true. Kashina nodded, and Minato and the Anbu disappeared. Kashina looked at the family picture on Minato's desk, please be alright Naruto and Mito. Haruka walked down the street with her older cousins. Kenno being 11 felt like he should be taking care of them. Alright Katashi, Daichi, and Haruka, since neither Sasuke and Naruto won't be around for a while. As well Aiko just became a genin, I will be looking after you guys. Katashi snorted, what makes you think we're gonna listen to an idiot like you? Ken eyes twitch, shut up Katashi. You're always so stuck up. 
You think you're better than everyone else. Katashi snorted again, not everyone else. Just you. Haruka sighed and looked down at five-year-old Daichi, I guess while they fight, I'll be looking after you. You want to go back home Daichi? Daichi shook his head, I don't care, wherever you guys want to go. I'm kind of sick staying home all day, but I'm kind of scared of entering the academy next year. Haruka grinned, it's not that scary Daichi. It's actually pretty fun, you should meet all my friends sometime. Ken then stopped fighting with Katashi, yet Daichi you shouldn't be scared. The academy isn't half bad. Katashi sighed, for once the dobe's right, the academy is actually a great time. If you don't include the history lessons. The three academy students shivered for a second. Dake shrugged his shoulders, I don't know. Haruka grabbed Daichi by the hand, don't worry about it no Daichi, you still have a year before you go. Let's go get some ice cream. The three boys wet dropped as they followed behind the ice cream addicted girl. They never did notice the crow watching them from the shadows. Guys, I will stop here, I hope did you enjoyed this video. If you do please leave a like and subscribe for more amazing content and if you are still watching this video then comment hearts box. Thanks you guys for watching this video, take care, see you in next video. 14.